Hi, Bogdan. How are you? Hi, Suzanne. I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. It's a little hot out here in Washington State. How about you in Georgia? Same. Yes, yeah, same here. We had 97 today. Oh, my and God. And a thunderstorm, so it's so humid. I don't want to get outside. Oh, I don't blame you. No, yeah. Three, I, I have three dogs. They are looking at me when I'm trying to get them out, like, Mm -mm. I don't think that's happening. It's hot even for us. So we're going to do our business inside, if you don't mind. Well, they have a point. Not today, right. Well, yeah. I don't blame you. It's it's hot for our little furry friends. <laughs> mm. um, great. So I want um to ask if you just would like to introduce yourself, a little bit about you, your HR background whatever you want to share the fact that we met on linkedin and kind of mm -hmm. what you want to say about yourself for viewers yes ah, my journey actually started in romania and in the beginning i went to school and i got my bachelor degree in business administration because i thought i'm gonna go into banking which i tried to do i got hired at uh, Transylvania Bank in Romania. And after two or three weeks, the human resource manager was leaving. So he asked me if I would like to take over. Being fresh out of school, I have a lot of doubts. And I asked him why. He said that I seem to be a people person and he would like me to give it a try. And I didn't question him. I took the position. I ended up loving it. I realized I'm a people person, so I went back to school, got my master's degree, but in human resource management. And then my wife convinced me to move over in the U.S. It was either her coming back to Romania or me moving to the U.S. Of course, she won't because I'm here. But it was actually good, extremely good. I started, had a very, very good, I can say, start. I got hired for a healthcare company as the HR manager, not even two months after I arrived. I got everything accredited, my diplomas and everything pretty fast. I thought it was going to be a long process, but it wasn't. And I worked with the same company for s close to seven years. We've been bought in the meantime by a bigger company. Everybody keeps saying we merge with them. But I'd rather say we've been bought because I realized that four months later, after being promoted, I woke up with an email saying I'm part of a big layoff about 400 people. So that was it pretty much. Since then, I was keep trying to find another job. And I thought it's going to be really easy, honestly. Talk, and just get rehired in a blink of an eye. That was not the case, not at all. I ended up less than a month after I been laid off. I ended up at the emergency room, or not for the first time. Unfortunately, I was keep telling the doctors that something is wrong with me for about three years. And they were always blaming all of my symptoms on anxiety. I'm an anxious person and I know that. I've always been, but I can manage that. I was trying to explain them from human to human, not from patient to doctor. They were never able to go past that. I've been prescribed anti-anxiety meds, which are helping, of course. I'm not denying that. But at the same time, my symptoms were keep coming back so this time i even though i'm an extremely calm person at the emergency room they gave me an iv because they said i'm dehydrated and anxious and of course the second day i went back because i couldn't walk at all my my vision was blurry my balance was not far from an extremely intoxicated person which i was not because i don't drink so I ended up again to the emergency room in Oak Park at Rush University. And everybody, I 
put up a show. I started yelling at everyone because they were trying to tell me through my anxiety. So I asked them, do you think everything is in my head? Okay, prove it. Do an MRI, do a CT scan, and then it's either me I'm going nuts, I'm just crazy and I'm losing it, or something else is wrong with me. They had to keep me overnight. And finally, in the morning, at, I still remember the time, 5.37 a.m., they came in and they told me they have some news for me. Like, okay, they are good or bad news? Oh, they are pretty bad news. We think you might have a mess. I'm like, what do you mean you think I might have a mess? Well, we are not sure yet. I know, but it's not like you are telling me I might have a cold or the flu, but I'll be fine eventually. Like, yeah, you have to follow up with a neurologist, but it looks like you have multiple lesions on your brain already. And my first reaction was I was laughing. And of course, they were looking at me like I was the crazy one. They're like, okay, we were right, he's crazy. And I told them I'm not crazy, I'm just relieved. After all these years complaining about something being wrong with me, and you guys keep telling me that, no, I'm perfectly healthy, it's just my anxiety acting up. I don't have to prove it to anyone, but I prove it to myself that I'm not going crazy. I have actually a condition that causes a lot of issues with me. And then, if losing my job was not enough, the hassle just began, actually. I was trying to apply for Medicaid in the beginning, and I've been to three different neurologists just to make sure it's what they are saying it is. They confirmed it's a mess, but not before. They asked me to do another set on, of MRIs, my brain, cervical spine, and lumbar spine, because MS can give you lesions on all those three places. So when they gave me the code for three MRIs, over $17,000, because I was uninsured. And I told them, guys, I do not have that kind of money. And even if I would, I, I'm not sure I will pay this much to have an MRI. So I had to buy a flight to Romania, been back to Romania, paid a few hundred dollars, had the MRI, had the spinal tap or lumbar puncture, however it's called, which again confirmed the mess and came back to the US. And then I was trying to get some kind of treatment because I was on Medicaid, so they were supposed to help. My neurologist prescribed me a, in the beginning, he wanted me to try, it's called Mavenclad. He submitted to the insurance, they denied it. We submitted an appeal, they denied the appeal. I went to the other neurologist, he wanted me to try Ocrevus. Again, sent to insurance, denied. He submitted an appeal, denied. So I called myself. My doctor told me that he's going to handle it, but I was curious what's going on. And I asked him, why do you keep refusing my treatment? I am insured with you, right? Like, like yeah, but out of 21 medications that are approved for MS, we only covered two of them. I know, but you cannot decide what's better for every single person. Out of 21, you just said you only cover two medications. Every single person is different. It's based on symptoms, on a lot of factors. The doctor has to decide that, right? So I told them, look, I'm just going to, I want to, I don't want to be on Medicaid anymore because it's hurting me. I spoke with the people from Ocrevus the infusions, and they told me if I will be non-insured, they'll help me through their patient foundation, which I did. I got approved to get the drug for free. It's close to $200,000 a year with no insurance. So, and the thing is, there are only two infusions per year. So, if my math is right, it's close to $100,000. For a, for a single infusion, which is just, again, I keep using the word criminal for them. It's just criminal. So I thought I'm going to be fine, but we moved because we hit the snag. 
our financial situation was really bad. We had to sell the house, pay off the bank, and we had to move to a different state, find some place which was much cheaper, which is totally fine. And I thought I'm just going to start the treatment because I'm like, okay, I got approved. I can start the treatment. But because I have a new neurologist and I move, we have to go through the process again. So the Medicaid process or the uh, medical sort of charitable process? Both of them. Both. So do you need both. three... Do you need three infusions a year or do you need more than that a year? Two of them. But okay. two okay. of them. Two, okay. Yes, but my neurologist, I just had an MRI two weeks ago, actually, less than two weeks ago. And I spoke with her. She's an amazing lady. And she told me that she doesn't like the progression of my MS. And she talked to me about the hematopoietic stem cell transplant, which I did a lot of research. It's basically harvesting the stem cells from your own spine, processing them, then go through a whole process of chemotherapy, erase your whole immune system, so they're going to get rid of all the cells on my own body because they are still not sure which ones are the troublemakers causing my own body to attack itself. So is that and an infusion? Is that process an infusion? No. Or? It's not a surgery, not an infusion. First, they have to harvest some of your bone marrow. And they take it out of your spine? A spinal yes. cap? Okay. Something like that, yes. Something like a spinal tap. On the spinal tap, they're just taking some cerebrofine. I'm not, not even sure how to pronounce it. It's called cerebrospinal fluid, something like that. But with this one, they are basically have to get some of your bone marrow. Because from that, they can extract some stem cells, process them however they have to. And then after you go through the chemotherapy, you have basically no immune system for a while. And then they're going to inject again into your spine with your own stem cells. And it's going to take probably between six months and a year for your immune system to recover. You have to go back and get all the vaccinations you had your whole life because you have the immune system of a baby. But so far, they had an amazing success with this specific procedure. It was, it's used in the US, it's approved by the FDA, but it's not covered by any kind of insurance. So if anyone has between $300,000 and over a million dollars, and they have a mess, this is their best shot. Well, does that, that's outrageous, of course. Nobody has that kind of money. Do they have a, um, a department where they will pick up funds that people can't pay? Because that's not at all. Not at all. Not um, at all. And when they take the stem cells uh, from you, do they save enough for treatments for a year? Or how much do they get from you? For how this long? is only a one-time thing. Just because they are erasing your whole immune system, uh -huh. they know you have... Just because it's very complicated, but because we have so many cells in our body and they are not sure which ones are causing the MS, they are just erasing every single one of them. Okay. And then Please we... Fight. Yes, with what they are taking from your uh, spine, they are just injecting you back with pretty much their cells with no memory. So they are they have to be teached by your brain to develop into whatever kind of cells they have to. 
Absolutely. That's amazing. You know, it's, it's almost miraculous what they can do, but how do people like you get the money and what do they say? Like if you go over to Germany and get this treatment, um, I was taking notes, HSCT. Um, how do people, do they have any advice for how to pay for it? Not at all. There are a lot of countries offering this treatment, mostly because people, I spoke with plenty of them in different countries, in Turkey, Mexico, India, Germany, and they all told me the same thing. At least 75% of their patients are coming from the U.S. And I didn't have to ask them why, because I know the reason. Nobody can afford to pay in here for the treatment. And on other countries, even though it's still extremely expensive, they can manage to do it somehow because it's a huge, huge difference. You can pay 10 times less than what you would be paying in here. But yes. go ahead. I know there is treatment in Seattle close by me, so I know it's probably going to be way more expensive. Is that right? <laughs> Yes, they are offering even in here a lot of hospitals, including Mayo Clinic. But honestly, I'm afraid to even call them to ask how much is it. They had, they were offering it. One of my neurologists when I was back in Chicago was in Milwaukee, in Wisconsin. And he told me the hospital, Froder something hospital, is offering this kind of treatment. But... He doesn't know the exact number, but he knows for sure it's at least $350,000. And I told him, Doc, I'm sorry, I would love to. I will take the risk because it's a risk. You're going to be with no immune system for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. I told him I will take the risk. But unfortunately, I don't have $350,000 laying around. You have to be in a hospital for at least three weeks a month. But still, the cost is just astronomical. Way yes. it's yeah. unaffordable. Might as well forget it for anybody or yeah. very few people. Well, let me ask: When you like, if you were to get to the treatment, and and I hope you do, um, and you have to be in a totally clean environment, no germs. When if you were to come home, then how do you? What do you do at home to keep you with your immune system um, the way it's going to be low? I don't know how to say oh, that. How do you that's keep a, yourself when you get home? That's, that's a good question because I asked a lot of questions during my last call with the clinic from Frankfurt, Germany. I asked, I spoke with the nurse in the beginning, and then because I had so many questions, she passed me to the doctor, one of the doctors that's performing the procedure. And I asked him the same thing. So will I be fine to just get into a plane and go back home? And he told me that's why I have to stay for so long in the hospital. The whole procedure is going to take a week, maximum of 15 days. But the rest, at least two more weeks, they want me to stay into a uh, room with... I'm not sure what kind of filters, but basically they are 99.9% .9 sure no bacteria, no viruses or whatsoever are entering the room. And after that, your immune system is already rebuilding. So you are not leaving the hospital with no immune system at all. You're going to have your immune system, but it's, it might be working about 15 to 20%. So during the next three months, you have to be extremely careful, avoid getting a call or pretty much anything. After that, three to six months, your immune system should be recovering from anywhere from 50% to 75%. And after a year, you should have your whole immune system back. Wow, because I can just imagine you'd have to live practically in a bubble or something at home to get no germs, that could be very serious. You could yep. get really sick. Um, don't, don't want that to happen. Um, no. 
No, but when you recover, what do they predict? I mean, are you a new person? You're not going to have MS. I mean, what what yeah. happens? Yeah. Um, their studies, they were watching people almost 20 years after they're having the procedure and they had no relapses, no symptoms, nothing. Wow. It's basically gone. And it's not used only for MS. They are using it for a lot of other diseases, mostly autoimmune diseases, but has great results. Of course, a lot of people like myself, a regular person, I don't think it's a way for someone to afford this kind of money. Honestly, it's... It's out of reach for um, 99% of the people. I mean, you'd have to get some wealthy company or organization. Um, and what I hope is for this video and other information that you've sent around on LinkedIn when I first met you, we'll get to local news and um, influencers that have, you know, hundreds and thousands hundreds of thousands of followers and get money out there because I know you have a GoFundMe site and I'm going to put it in this video. Um, you're trying mm -hmm. to reach that. Now you're trying to reach $300,000 total for no, the, no, not at all. No, the one that I found in Germany, they are one of the cheapest option. And when I say cheapest, I would love to say it's $200, but no, it's going to be probably about $75,000. But again, still a huge difference from what it costs in the US. Yeah. It's another setting. It's no matter what kind of insurance you have, none of them will cover not even 1% of the procedure. They are not touching you with anything. And I know there are a lot of people, myself personally, I know at least five other people living with MS, mm -hmm. maybe worse than mine. And the same thing told me we cannot afford, we have, I hope something is going to change soon because it's outrageous. The medicine alone, which only promises to try to keep your disease from progressing so fast, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is not normal, not at all. No, and you have to keep taking the medicine. So you're saying you can take the medicine or get the stem cell treatment in Germany. So that yes. should get rid of it altogether. That's the best answer. And $75,000 is going to cover the travel, the hotel, the hospital, all those expenses, basically, right? Yeah. They are covering pretty much everything from the time you arrive. You just have to go from the airport to the hospital. And after that, every single thing is covered from meals, blood work, supervision, the procedure itself, the recovery period. They have a lot of physical therapy at the same time in order for you to recover, to try to recover a little bit faster until the day you are walking off the door. I see. Um, but, I mean, if you can't afford to fly to Germany for this treatment, basically it leaves people with no answers because even the medicine that helps is so unaffordable. I mean, the medicine you've talked, you've said how hard it is to get the coverage, to get the number of treatments you need, the Medicaid, uh, snags and holding you up. So in the U.S., this makes it impossible for people, pretty much impossible to get treatment and yeah. get the treatment that, you know, you need. This really is something that I know there's the um, MS uh, National Organization you've talked about, and you've told me that even going to government, you know, our representatives, they basically ignore this problem. Can you say a little bit about that? Yes, I actually went. It was my first time. I had no idea they were organizing an event like that. It's called 
Quack MS, and last year was in Chicago. I had the chance to participate. I met a lot of the neurologists, including mine at that time, and we spoke about the problem a lot. And I asked him, Doc, how is this possible? Because if you are having insurance, it's hard and extremely expensive to get the treatment. What, what can someone like me do when I'm having no insurance? And like you know, the Medicaid keep rejecting pretty much every single read one plan that you are trying to offer me. And he said that he's talking with the people from the National MS Society monthly, every two months, and they are trying to push a lot of people towards the right direction, open their eyes, look into the problem more, and find a way to make the medicine more affordable. Because beside the medicine, you have to get regular MRIs. Depending on the medications that you are on, you have to get regular checkups, regular blood work. You have to look for the liver and everything else to work good. So it's not just the medication itself. There it's a lot. So it's overwhelming no matter if you are working and you are insured or if you are not working and you are not insured because it's still going to be a hassle. It's just the way the system is. Not good, but at least for the moment, we cannot change it. I was talking with a lot of people, and I told them, I'm hoping by trying to email a lot of the companies, at least the local companies, government organizations, and so on, maybe somebody's going to at least give it a little more attention and maybe one day they'll be okay. This is wrong. We have to do something about it. But I'm not sure when that day will come. It just really seems unfair. What are you, what are you doing now for like income or whatever, if you want to say, because I know you've been long time in HR management uh, you're very capable and experienced, but what is, what's the job uh, looking like for you now? I mean, what are you doing now? Any side gigs or? Yes. My friends in the beginning were laughing because I started driving with Lyft and they're like, so you're basically just driving around town? I'm like, well, yeah, because I'm applying for a lot of jobs. I'm getting rejections mostly because they are saying I'm overqualified. I, don't believe in that too much, or I'm getting ghosted. I never hear back. Even after I moved in here in Georgia around August, I had an interview when even for an in-person interview with the executive director, the director of nursing, it was a hospital, human resource role as well. That was it. Everybody loved me. They said, yeah. oh, my God, we would love to work with you. This is what we can offer. I told them I will be more than happy to accept it. Put it in writing. That was it. The way they called you, that's the way they called me. It's hard right now. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. And let's, you know, get people to support you. And I'm getting a message on Zoom right now that I'm running out of time that I have to upgrade my membership. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the meeting and mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much. And I want to um, send you an email. Okay. Follow yeah. up. Thank you Perfect. so much. Bogdan, thank you so here. much, Suzanne. Thank you. Oh, very welcome. You have a great care. evening. You have thank a great you. Evening. Thank you too. Bye. Bye. -bye.